Mic check, mic check. You guys hear me? Wow, wow, what an honor. Mm. First ever Do Hard Things Conference. I am so honored to be here in front of you guys, seriously. From the bottom of my heart, I've gotten to have some really awesome conversations with so many of you guys over the last few days, and you guys are special. Like, this is a really special group of people, and I truly feel blessed to have the opportunity to be around you guys and now to have the opportunity to be up here on stage. This feels like a dream. Have you guys felt the energy the last few days? I know I felt just this rush of energy, and it's because of you guys. You guys have created that. So thank you for being here and making this so special for myself and for everyone else here. And so before we get started, we've got to give a huge round of applause and gratitude. Petey Kender, Zach Hummel, these guys, man, these guys have worked their tails off to make this thing a reality. As Zach alluded to yesterday, this thing doesn't just come together. Like this has been a lot of work to create this opportunity for all of us. So. Thank you, seriously. Thank you, guys. Do hard things. I think that means something different to all of us, right? We all have a different definition of what do hard things means. For me, you guys are getting to watch me right now, right here, in this moment, do the hardest thing that I could possibly do. Public speaking. Mm. This has always been my number one fear in life. Who can relate? Who's scared of public speaking? Yeah, it's just not easy, right? Before I got up here on stage, even right now, my legs are shaking, my heart raced through the roof, my pits are sweating, my hands are sweating, my mouth's dry. I've been terrified for most of my life. You see, I've gotten my black belt in facing fear throughout my life, as I'm gonna share more of tonight. And there was no way in hell I was gonna let that fear stop me from getting up here on stage and sharing this message that God has put on my heart to share with you all. Thank you. And so I hope to be an inspiration for you guys to lean in a little bit more and follow fear as the compass. So we're going to do this together tonight. Let's go. I want to start by sharing with you guys one of my favorite quotes. It's from the Dalai Lama, and it simply says, the enemy is a really good teacher. Mmm, the enemy is a really good teacher. It's the best. I want to take you guys through a little experiment now. So if you would, go ahead and close your eyes. Everyone, close your eyes for the next minute or so. Now that your eyes are closed, I invite you to let fear in right now in this moment. I want you to focus your mind on something that absolutely terrifies you. Something that elicits so much fear within your being. Feel it right now. For some of y'all, that could be putting yourselves up here on stage right now in my shoes, speaking to a crowd of people. What does it feel like when that fear arises within your body? Feel it. Where do you feel that in your body? For me personally, it starts deep in my stomach, in my core. I feel those butterflies start to flutter. I feel my pits, my hands start to sweat, my heart rate starts going up. Go ahead and open your eyes, guys. Facing our deepest fears, in life, it can be downright terrifying. It's the scariest thing we can possibly imagine ourselves doing. But I'm here to tell you that fear, fear is the compass. It's the compass that leads you to all of the riches that this life has to offer, all of the abundance, anything that you can dream of, it can be yours if you're just willing to lean in a little bit more. There are no shortcuts to achieving our dream life. There are no shortcuts. Every other path, it leads to an average you and an average life, full of mediocrity. And one day, it leads you to your deathbed. It's a powerful thought, being on your deathbed. We're all going to die one day. And on your deathbed, deep, immense feelings of regret. Mm. Questions of what if, what could have been if I just leaned in just a little bit more? a scary thought. Despite how scary fear can be, I've got a cool little trick that I want to share with you guys. You see, most people, they view fear as a negative. 
as something that they want to stay as far away from as they possibly can. So they do. They push it away. They push it away. Who can relate to that? I know I can in my life, right? Trying to stay as far away from fear as I can. But you see, we can rewire our brains. We can reframe the way that we view fear. We can shift our perspective of fear from a negative to a positive. And this shift, it's not that big of a shift. It's actually just a slight two millimeter shift in our mindset. And that shift, whew, that'll change your entire life forever. That's the key to reaching everything you want to reach in life. And over the next 20 minutes, I'm going to help you guys do just that. Reframe the way that you view fear. Thank you. What's going on, guys? My name is Jay Azeltine. I'm 28 years old, and I'm from small town Ohio. I don't know if all of you guys know this about me. I'm from small, small town Ohio. I'm talking in the sticks and the cornfields of Ohio. Who's from a small town? A lot of people here. Okay. My small town has one single stoplight, all right? And that's no exaggeration. Leah, Zach, they've both been there. It's a one single stoplight town. Those of you guys that are from a small town, you're going to be able to relate to this. So growing up, I wasn't exposed to a lot of different ideas, a lot of different ways of thinking, right? I wasn't exposed to a lot of different types of people. Everything was really superficial and surface level where I grew up. I didn't hear people talking about personal development. I didn't hear people talking about fear or fear being the compass. You know, we didn't talk about our emotions at all growing up. It's a really blue collar way of life where I grew up. You see, you go work your nine to five, you go home, you put food on the table for your family, and you do that over and over and over again until one day you retire and then shortly after you die. It's not the life that I want. And so my life was that way and I thought that was gonna be my future for many years until I was 16 years old. At 16 years old, I met my first mentor. Mentors are so powerful, right? Mentors accelerate our growth throughout life. And I met my first mentor at 16. This guy's name was Corey G. And he had this magnetism to him. There was something special about him. He had like this magnetic pull. And from societal standards, this guy was more successful than anyone I'd ever met in my entire life. Had the money, had the cars, friends with athletes. And so something deep within me, it made it really clear that I needed to build a relationship with this guy. I now know that to be my intuition. God was speaking to me through my intuition. And so I listened, and I started showing up to the gym every day at 5 a.m. to train with this guy. I started making sacrifices at 16 to start building a relationship with this guy in hopes that he would share with me what had made him so successful. Because again, I'd never met anyone like this. I'm like, how do you, how do, you do this? After a few months, he kind of starts to take a liking to me, and he takes me under his wing, and he introduces me to something called personal development. Who's heard of it? Personal development, right? We're all very very blessed to have access to these things that a lot of people just have never been exposed to. And so he introduced me to two books early on, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki and Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Has anyone ever read those books before? Okay, if you haven't, add those to your list. That same year, okay, special year, 2010, 16 years old, I also, by divine intervention, stumbled upon something called the Joe Rogan podcast. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it before. It's a really small show. Yeah, okay, this was in 2010 though, before anyone knew what a, what a podcast was. And so between Corey G, my first mentor, and between the Joe Rogan podcast, I was exposed to so much. You guys have seen Joe Rogan podcast, it's crazy. Everything goes, right? So you can imagine me at 16, listening to this stuff, just like mind blown. And so what I gathered through this personal development early on was that I could create any life I wanted to create. I could become anyone that I wanted to become through facing my fears, through developing my mind, body, and spirit, and utilizing fear as the compass. And so really quickly, I just became obsessed. I went all in. I started reading all the books. I started finding as many YouTube mentors as I could. My life started to change really quick. Before I go any further, though, I got to rewind. I got to share with you guys a really crucial part of my story. So you see, Eight years prior to that happening, it was a tough year. I went through some really, really, really challenging childhood trauma. I won't get into the details, but it, it shook my reality to its core. It shocked my little nervous system so deeply. I was such a little innocent boy, and it wrecked my life. And from that point forward, for years and years and years, I was hurting. I was 
deeply depressed. I was incredibly anxious as a 9, 10, 11 year old. I was terrified of people, still kind of am terrified of people, but I've gotten over it a little bit. And I was really, really, man, I mean, I even had suicidal thoughts as a 10 year old kid, right? Like that shouldn't happen. Like kids should not be dealing with that stuff. And so after a few years, I started to think that my entire life was going to be this way. I started to surrender the fact that, man, I guess this is just how my life's going to be. It's never going to change, right? Oh well until I was 16, until I found personal development, right? And when I found personal development, the biggest realization I had was that everything that had happened in my life up until that point had happened for me. It didn't happen to me, okay? And I realized that all of that pain that I had gone through, because it was a lot of pain, it was a lot of hurt. I know you guys can relate to this. We all got our trauma. I could turn that pain into purpose, okay? Pain into purpose. And so that became my life's mission. That became my life's work. That was all I wanted to do was develop my mind, body, spirit, because I knew if I healed myself, I could help so many other people heal themselves as well. And so that was my life's mission going forward, following fear, utilizing the motto that fear is the compass. There is no other path. And so you see, that was 12 years ago. So crazy, I'm almost 30 years old now, 28 years old. And over the last 12 years, I've come a really long way. I'm so proud of the work that I put in over the last 12 years and how far I've come. I've continually stepped into the path of most resistance over the last 12 years. I've continually leaned into the fire so close that I'm surprised my beard hasn't burned off because I'm leaning into that thing as far as I can. Every single time I lean into that fear, I come out on the other side a new man with new levels of confidence, new levels of courage, new levels of personal power. And you see, that scared little boy that I used to be completely unrecognizable from the man that you see here in front of you today. So proud of myself. Here's the craziest part. Despite how far I've come over the last 12 years, this year, 2022, this is the scariest damn year of my life. How could that be, right? How could this year, after 12 years of conquering so much fear, be the scariest year of my life? Well, it all starts with a text from our good friend Zach Hummel. Wouldn't you know? This is a <laughs> recurring theme in Zach and I's relationship. Jeremy, he's all about this as well. A lot of you guys, we're always pushing each other to do crazy shit, right? Zach texted me last year. He's like, let's do a 5K crawl. So Chris McIntyre and I end up crawling 5K. This text though, this text was on December 28th of 2021. And the text simply read, do you want to do a full Ironman with me this year? Oh man, fear immediately engulfed my being. Yeah, these guys know. They're in it as well. They're, brought, they're wrapped into this thing as well. <laughs> this guy. And so fear immediately consumes my body, right? Butterflies, heart drops into the stomach, pit starts sweating, mind starts going a million miles per hour all in a split second. But I don't even have to think about it. My heart knows the answer. As much as I don't want to do it, I'm like, okay, I have to do this. Within a split second, I text him back, I'm in. Holy shit, I just committed to doing a full Ironman, <laughs> okay? And so when I had committed to that, I didn't even know what a full Ironman consisted of, okay? <laughs> this is how I operate. And so the previous summer, Zach and I, we had done a sprint triathlon before. It's the smallest version that you can do in a triathlon. It's nothing compared to a full Ironman, but I had my feet wet, right? I kind of knew what this consisted of a little bit. After I'd already committed to Zach, I go on Google. I do a quick Google search. Full Iron Man. Google machine does its thing. Boop, pops up. 2.4 mile swim in the ocean. 112 mile bike ride. And then a 26.2 mile run to finish this thing. That's not in three days. That's all consecutively done. Back to back to back, right? That's a daunting task for anyone. Anyone in here, we're all in pretty good physical shape. Ryan's done many full Iron Mans. That's a very daunting task, right? It's not easy. It's especially daunting for someone like your boy that doesn't know how to swim and is terrified of swimming, okay? That made it that much more exciting for me though. And so I gotta tell you guys a story. So growing up, I didn't have formal swim lessons. I've been giving my mom shit for about a year. Leah knows all about it. She claims that she, gave me, she took me to the pool when I was a kid and I refused. I don't buy it, but I didn't know how to swim, right? I knew how to doggy paddle. 
I knew how to breaststroke. That's even what it's called, right? Is it breaststroke? Okay. I knew how to breaststroke, and that's how I finished the sprint triathlon because it was only 400 meter swim. It's very minimal. Okay, didn't know how to swim, and I also didn't know what a riptide was at 16 years old. And so at 16 years old, special year apparently, a lot of stuff happened that year, I was down in Clearwater, Florida, a couple guys here from the Clearwater area, and I was out there swimming, having fun. My parents were in Ohio. I can't believe they let me go down there with my friends. I almost fucking died. I'm out in the water. I'm doggy paddling, right? And all of a sudden, I find myself getting pulled back as I'm trying to swim. I'm getting pulled back, I'm trying to swim. I don't know what a riptide is. I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? And I start getting exhausted. I start wearing out, and my mind starts to panic. And in that moment, I remember it so vividly, I thought I was going to drown. And I blacked out, and I just kept going. Didn't quit. And eventually, I found myself on the beach. Thank God I didn't die. Okay? So that imprinted a lot of fear around the water, as you can imagine, on my nervous system. Two years later, I didn't learn my lesson. Then I'm at a CrossFit competition. This is the only CrossFit competition I ever have done. Don't worry. And I'm out in the middle of nowhere in Ohio, in the sticks. And halfway through the competition, there's this big ass pond you got to swim across. Very poorly managed. You shouldn't have to swim across the pond when you're already exhausted. And so I get halfway through the competition and I show up to the pond and there's nobody there. There's no lifeguards, there's no other competitors. I'm like, shit. Okay, I have to do it. So I dive in the water. I start doggy paddling, breaststroking, and I get halfway across the pond when all of a sudden that exhaustion starts setting in, right? And that panic that I felt when I was a kid two years earlier, really starts coming on. And I was like, man, this is going to be a really sad death if I die here in this pond <laughs> in the middle of nowhere at a CrossFit competition. That's not going to be good. <laughs> and so, long story short, I end up finally making it to the other side. Thank God I didn't drown. But those two experiences imprinted so much fear around the water for me, in addition to not knowing how to swim. And so for years, I stayed as far away from that as I could until Zach texted me, until I committed to a full Ironman. And so the last seven months, guys, I've been living by the motto that fear is the compass more than ever, okay? I've been showing up to the pool five times a week, every single week or the lake, and working my tail off to get better as a swimmer. And I'm really proud of how much I've improved in the water. Some of you guys have seen on social media, I'm really proud of it. But here's the thing. I still, even today, on the drive to the swim workouts, I still get butterflies in my stomach every single day on the way there. I get so nervous. I get so nervous just thinking about the 2.4 mile swim coming up. But that's why I do it. That's why it's so exciting, because I get to lean into that shit. And so on November 5th, a lot of guys here are going to be doing that race. November 5th, I'm going to dive into that ocean. I'm going to crush it. I'm going to come out on the other side a new man with new levels of confidence, personal power. So that's one daunting task that I'm taking on this year, right? I've grown so much through that process. I'm a totally new man from it. It's been awesome. Well, the other one, wouldn't you know, it started from a from text from Zach. It was only three weeks after the first text. I'm still reeling about the fact that I'm doing an Ironman, okay? <laughs> three weeks later, I get another text from Zach. I open it up. I'm always nervous when I read Zach's text. I never know what's coming. He recently, actually, side topic, he recently asked me if I want to bike across the United States next year. I haven't committed to that one yet. And so this text, though, it reads... Would you like to come speak at the first ever Do Hard Things conference this year? Ooh, Immediate fear engulfed my body. Butterflies, pit starts sweating. Mine starts going crazy. Don't even have to think about it. My heart's like, you got to do this. Yeah. All right, I'm in. Right? What an honor to come speak at the first ever Do Hard Things conference. But as you guys know, this is my number one fear in life, public speaking. And so over the last many months, I've gotten to work my tail off on this speech. I've gotten to lean in over and over and over, and it's been really challenging. Between this and the Iron Man, I mean, I've cried, and I've had so much doubt, and Leah's had to deal with me. It's been tough at times. But man, I'm a new man from who I was when I first committed to these things. And now here I am in the middle of this speech. It's so surreal. And that fear is not even there. It's totally gone. It's the fear. The fear is the worst part. And so, despite how far I've come, though, I'm still afraid. I'm afraid today, I'm afraid tomorrow, I'll be afraid next week, next year. Because anyone that tells you that they're not afraid and they don't have fear is fucking lying to you. Everyone experiences fear. It's okay to be afraid. See, The Rock, the most badass Navy SEALs, even our hero Zach Hummel experiences fear. It's okay 
to be afraid. You see, it's all about how you respond to that fear. And so I want to share with you guys, it's one of my favorite excerpts from the book, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. You guys hear me talk about it all the time. I just talk about it over and over and over. I've read the book probably 20 times. Who's read The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield? Okay, awesome. And anyone that has it, add it to your list. And I'm going to give this copy away. If anyone's interested tonight in this copy of The War of Art, I'll give it to you. It's an extra copy. Before I go ahead and share this, though, Henry Fonda. You guys probably don't know who Henry Fonda is. A bunch of young people here. Some of you older folks probably know who Henry Fonda is. Uh, And so Henry Fonda, before I share this, was one of the most famous stage performers and actors of all time, spanning over 50 years in Hollywood and Broadway. This guy is a total legend. So I read this for the first time. It was powerful. The page reads, Resistance Never Sleeps. And the quote goes like this. Henry Fonda was still throwing up before each stage performance, even when he was 75. In other words, fear doesn't go away. The warrior and the artist live by the same code of necessity, which dictates that the battle must be fought anew every single day. Ooh, the battle must be fought anew every single day. When I read that for the first time, it changed my life. It gave me permission to go forward anyways, despite the fear that I was feeling. We all have that fear. And so now that we know that everyone experiences fear, right? Well. The way that we view fear in our minds, positive or negative, and as a result, the way that we respond to fear, this will dictate the quality of your life, okay? That simply will dictate everything. And so when we encounter fear, just like I did before I got on stage tonight or when I accepted these challenges, we have two options when we encounter fear. It's really simple, not complicated, it's two options. See, the first option when fear arises, we can lean in real close Get that beer real close to the fire. Or, option two, we can lean away from that fear. We can push it as far away from us as we possibly can, which is what most people do. I've been guilty of, for sure, in my life, right? When we lean in, we're acting as our best self, okay? When we lean away, we're acting as our worst self. All of us, every single human, we have this spectrum of best self, worst self within us. We're all capable of anything bad and good. And it's up to us to choose which one we're going to identify with every single day. Okay? Fear is the compass. And what stands between the two, best self, worst self, is something that I've come to know as the gatekeeper. Ooh, what a cool name. The gatekeeper. Okay? So I'm going to share with you guys a story of when this gatekeeper came to me and this idea of the fact that we're all living in a box. So, as an introvert, I avoided music festivals and concerts at all costs growing up, right? Loud music, lots of people. It's my worst nightmare. I'm like, stay as far away from that as I can. Until February of 2020. And I decided to go to my first ever music festival. Two months prior, I had gone to the jungle. I had worked with ayahuasca for the first time. It helped me so much. It helped me release so much fear, helped me heal through so much of the trauma. And it gave me a lot of confidence and courage to go forward and to lean into more fear. And so I decided, okay, I'm gonna go to my first ever music festival. Well, the first night of the first ever music festival, I just so happened to take something called LSD. You guys ever heard of it? Some of you guys maybe have experimented with it. If you have, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it takes you deep, deep, deep within your being. It gives you an outside of the box perspective, okay? So I'll set the stage here. So I'm standing at the back of this massive stage of dance floor. And I'm there with my arms crossed, and there's thousand plus people probably. Everyone's dancing, having so much fun, loud music, lights. And I'm standing there with my arms crossed, feeling like super out of place and super uncomfortable. And now the LSD is coming on, and it's accelerating that process exponentially. Holy fuck. (laughs) (sighs) So I got a choice to make in that moment, right? Do I have the worst night of my entire life, and I have the most intense panic attack ever? Or do I have the best night of my life and really lean into this thing? In that moment, it all kind of happened in a flash, it's a divine moment, the idea of the box and the gatekeeper came to me. In that moment, as I'm standing there with my arms crossed, I realized that I had been living most of my life within the confines of a box. A box that's edges felt so real, so permanent, okay? And in that box for me were things like can't dance, right? Can't swim, socially anxious, can't speak in public. And in that moment, I realized that outside of that box was infinite potential, an infinite abyss 
a potential that was just awaiting me to take action and to lean in to that fear. And so, as I'm standing with my arms crossed, I decide I'm going to have the best night of my life. And so I decide to challenge the gatekeeper to the edges of the box and see if I can push beyond the box. And so I start kind of moving my body and I start dancing around a little bit. And I looked like shit. And I was super anxious the whole time. But I did it, right? And I had one of the best nights of my life. It was so much fun. And it was a huge breakthrough because I realized that this went way further than just dancing, right? All this other stuff inside of the box. Fuck, if I can just push past this fear, I can have it all. And so, you guys can see here, you got the box. And you guys can put yourself in this box as well, right? We all have our own box. And this box, this is our identity. And our identity is simply made up of all of our past experiences, right? Everything that's happened in our life up until this point makes up our identity. And so most people's future simply just becomes a reflection of their past because they never push the boundaries of the gatekeeper, okay? And so here's the coolest part, fear, right? We've been talking about fear. Well, fear is what takes us beyond the box, right? Fear is what is trying to pull us outside of the box. It's trying to lean us into that discomfort. And for me, outside of that box was things like Iron Man, right? We got world-renowned public speaker on the way. Dances like MJ. Michael Jackson, not quite there yet, but if I decide that I want that, I can have it, right? And so all this came to me, and it was, just, it was just so powerful. It gave me so much permission to go forward. And so whether we like it or not, fear is clearly the compass, right? It's the only way to reaching all the dreams that we have for ourselves. There are no other ways. And the fear of the fear is the scariest part. I'm telling you what, guys, from personal experience of going to the jungle and stepping on stage and doing the swimming, it's like, it's the buildup that's the scariest part. The fear of the fear is the scariest part, okay? And suffering is a choice. Suffering is a choice. We get to decide if we're suffering or we're enjoying the experience. It begins with a simple decision, a decision to lean in, a decision that can be made right here, right now, at the first ever Do Hard Things conference, yeah. right? Your life, your dream life, it's going to take time to build, okay? It's not going to just happen overnight. But that decision is when it all starts. It starts with a commitment. It starts with a decision. And I'm telling you what, from personal experience, there is so much light, there's so much love right on the other side of that decision. Anything you can imagine, it can be yours if you're just willing to lean in a little bit more. And so we got Zach coming up next. He's going to really light a fire under your guys' asses. I know you guys are feeling inspired this weekend after everything that we've gone through, right? You're feeling really motivated. That's awesome. But here's the deal. If you don't make that commitment, if you don't make that decision to make a fucking change and to lean in, you're going to go home super fired up, but after a few days, that motivation is going to be gone. You're going to get punched in the face by normal life, and you'll revert right back to old ways. And nothing will have changed. And I know that from personal experience, because I've gone to a lot of these events, retreats. I tell myself, ah, oh, like, give, me, give myself a couple days. I deserve it. Right? I'm going to go home and just kind of chill. Before I know it, I'm right back where I started, and nothing changed. And so, I encourage you guys to make that decision right here, right now, to lean in. All the way. Mm, lean all the way in. And you got to take action fast, okay? You've got to take action quick. And so if you can do something tonight, whatever's coming up for you, whatever that fear is, if you can take action on that tonight, do it tonight. Don't fucking put it off. If it's got to wait until tomorrow, do it tomorrow. If it's got to wait until you get home, do it first thing when you get home. Okay? I know some of you guys, you've been avoiding a hard conversation with a child, with a sibling, with a coworker, with a boss. Go have that hard conversation, right? You're going to get so much power from that conversation. It's not going to be nearly as scary as you think it's going to be. Some of you guys, you got a million dollar idea for a business that could be what sets you free from the nine to five job that you absolutely hate. Take the first steps on that thing. Some of you guys, you've been avoiding pushing yourselves physically. A lot of guys have already done it. If that's you, though, there's a perfect spot. It's a one-mile staircase in Manitou Springs that you can go get your ass on tomorrow morning and climb that thing. Take action. There's so much light. There's so much love right on the other side of that decision. I promise you that. But on the flip side, if you don't make that commitment, there are repercussions as well. And those repercussions, they include 
work in a job that you hate for the rest of your life. Man, that sounds terrible. You'll never be fully happy or present because you're constantly stuck in your head, battling, knowing how much more you could be, how much more you could be doing, how much more value you could be providing your family, this world. This one's going to hurt. Your kids, they'll never fully look up to you. They'll have to look to others for inspiration and for leadership because they just can't get that from you because you're a weak leader. We don't want that, do we? It's up to us though, right? You, 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 you. It's 100% in your control. It's in my control. We are fully in control of our destiny. No one else. And it starts with that simple decision. to Just lean in a little bit more. Get your face a little bit closer to that fire. And you can have it all. The world can be yours if you just follow that simple theme, that fear is the compass. And remember this, if things get challenging for you, which they will, suffering is a choice and it gets to be fun. Thank you guys so much. Wow. Come on. Come on.